So I thought, how fun would it be if I baked something for the Greek gods and goddesses? Hey guys, so I lately really felt the need to find myself another creative project again because, oh well, we still live in some hella crazy times right now and everything art and creative related makes me feel at least a little bit more excited and happy. So I decided to start a little recipe video series where I would bake something for some of the Greek gods and goddesses. Yay! <laughs> I don't know about you guys and maybe it's hella obvious and basic for me as I'm half Greek and also literally named Artemis, but I've always been quite interested in history and especially mythology. And so I got this idea where I wanted to try and incorporate some of the attributes and characteristics of each god and goddess into a recipe. I also just want to clarify real quick that this is just for fun and probably not accurate or anything like that. I just really want to have some fun with the things I remember from stories and tales I read or came across in my childhood. And now, without further ado, let's dive into this very first video where we are baking something for, you guessed it, Zeus. Zeus is known to be the highest god in Greek mythology father of the gods and goddesses, and also the most powerful out of all the Olympic deities. He is the god of the sky and controls the weather and especially lightning and thunder. He is also known for his, let's say, highly alarming behavior towards women, but that's not important for the cake we're making today, so let's just skip this part. So for the cake I envisioned something bright and impressive looking. I made this little sketch consisting of a yellowish three layer cake base with a light colored cashew buttercream and a meringue topping that I hope would somehow resemble a fluffy cloud. Then I also wanted to top the cake with some pomegranate seeds as pomegranate is said to be the royal fruit and a metaphor for eternal life. And um, yeah, that was my idea. For the cake for Zeus. Okay, so after this hopefully not too lengthy introduction, let's get to the actual recipe part of this video. Hope you enjoy! So we're starting off by adding 430 grams of flour into a bowl, followed by two teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and a pinch of salt. Now stir that and combine wet ingredients in a separate bowl. In there goes 160 grams of plain soy yogurt, 160 grams of water or plant milk, 120 grams of vegetable oil, One hundred and sixty grams of sugar. You can use coconut sugar, but it will make the dough a bit darker in the end. One teaspoon of vanilla and the juice of a half or a whole lemon, depending on how much lemon flavor you want. Then stir well and combine wet and dry ingredients together. When combining the wet and dry ingredients, you want to stir by hand until just combined. Do not overwork the mix or it will lose some of its fluffiness. You can also add a pinch of turmeric for a more yellow color, but that step is totally optional. So I was using a single cake tin for this recipe, but if you have more than one, I'd highly recommend dividing the dough into two or three cakes, because then you can save some baking time and therefore get a softer, more fluffy result. 
However, if you're only using one cake tin like me, bake the dough in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 60 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. In the meantime, we can start making the cashew buttercream frosting. For that, I already soaked 150 grams of cashews in some water overnight, drained and rinsed them and placed them into a blender or a food processor. To that, we're adding a half teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of salt, 60 grams of plant milk, I was using my homemade almond milk here, 100 grams of maple syrup and some lemon juice. Preferably without any seeds, but um, oh well. Now take a small saucepan and melt down 80 grams of coconut oil while already blending up the other ingredients until smooth. Then add the melted coconut oil and blend once again and place the whole mixture into the fridge overnight. Also, do a quick sneaky taste test to see if the flavors are to your liking. Once your cake base is done, leave it be for about 10 to 15 minutes before removing it from the cake tin and letting it sit on a baking or cooling rack until completely cooled down. For the cloud-like aquafaba meringue, whip up 50 grams of the liquid from a can of chickpeas until it resembles a whipped egg white consistency. This will take something between 6 to 8 minutes. Also preheat the oven to 100 degrees Celsius. Once the aquafaba is white and fluffy, add 1 teaspoon of lemon juice and optionally also 1 teaspoon of arrowroot starch to make the mix more stable. Then proceed by slowly adding 45 grams of sugar and beat for another 6 to 8 minutes until you get a somewhat shiny, thick marshmallow fluff consistency. Now spread the fluff onto a lined baking tray and shape into a kind of round cloud resembling blob that will fit on top of your cake. I was also trying to form some peaks so it would look more, I don't know, wild? <laughs> Whatever. Bake your work of art at 100 degrees until firm to the touch. This will take three and a half hours. Yep, I'm not joking. <laughs> the next day we're starting off by whipping up our cooled cashew buttercream until thick and fluffy, as well as cutting our cake base into three equal layers. I also removed some of the top of the cake to create a more even surface. And now we're finally assembling the cake. For that, add some of the cashew buttercream to your first layer and repeat for the whole cake. You can really take your time here as the cashew buttercream is quite thick and stiff and should not melt quickly. Finally, cover your whole cake very thinly with the remaining buttercream. I went for a semi-naked cake kind of look and had just enough of the cashew frosting for it. If you'd want to frost the cake completely, you may need to increase the amount of buttercream you're making. Now we just have to place our aquafaba meringue cloud on top of the cake and we're almost done. Lastly, I sprinkled some of the pomegranate seeds on top and also decorated everything with a sprinkle of edible gold glitter. Very extra, I know, but we're making a cake for a god, remember? And that's it, you guys. Here we have our finished Zeus cake. I am actually so proud of how this turned out and oh my god, the crispiness of the meringue cloud. You're not ready. Mm. 
However, I hope you enjoyed this slightly more artsy video of mine. And if you like, let me know which god or goddess you're looking forward to the most. And if you're interested in Greek mythology or other myths and tales at all. <laughs> okay, so now I'm off having cake for breakfast. Bye!